This Daily Dose is brought to you by Pirate.Black. Ah. This year, I think there's a lot of buzz about central bank currencies, and especially as someone who's really involved with privacy and privacy tech, what do you think about the, the buzz surrounding central bank currencies? Davos is old school. It's a bunch of bankers and CEOs and world leaders. And so for them, like this new hype, this new paradigm is really difficult to grasp. And they don't, I don't think they want it. I think they just want things to continue. And so a lot of the central bank cryptocurrency type things uh, really revolves around how do we continue with the status quo while still ticking a box that says, oh, we use blockchain. Do you think that there is a future in which uh, privacy coins like Monero could be considered compliant and viewed as fitting into that kind of framework while still offering the kind of privacy that they uh, were built for? I definitely think that we're starting to get into an age where people are going to take back their privacy. If you look at the moves that companies like Apple are making, they're mainstreaming privacy. They're saying it's okay to turn around and say to a government, I'm not going to comply with your regulation because I'm a big company that doesn't need to. I'm going to continue giving privacy back to the people. I'm going to continue enabling our users to have privacy. And so as that mainstreaming of privacy happens, we're going to see the general acceptance of privacy enhancing tools. So I fully foresee a future and I hope to see a future where uh, cryptocurrencies like Monero will just be viewed as like, well, it's like cash, you know? We can regulate the on-ramps and off-ramps as regulators, but it's just a digital version of cash. It's cash is transcended into this digital state, and we accept that as regulators, and we're just gonna regulate it as we, as we regulate cash today. So when it comes to that ongoing game of cat and mouse, what do you find are the biggest challenges that regulators and bankers here face when you talk to them about privacy? I think one of the big challenges is just getting them to understand that, um, I mean, they, they understand that privacy is good. They'll be the first to tell you, like, privacy is good, I guess, because of things that they're doing in their own lives. Um, but they, they're still hesitant about this form of privacy because it seems so Wild West to them. It's just a piece of software. There's no third party controlling it. There's no organization that when things go wrong, they can go knock on the door. That frightens them. And I don't think it's a concern about criminal behavior or anything like that. I think it's a concern with, like, when they have questions, who do they go to? when they want to understand things, who do they go to? And so I, I sort of see a, a future where organizations like Chainalysis and similar will be those educators of like, well, this is what we can and can't do with private cryptocurrencies. These are, this is the point at which we no longer have control. We no longer um, have insight into what's being done with it. So I guess another thing that I hear a lot about here is uh, the desire to monitor widespread patterns when it comes to financial transactions. Do you think that it's beneficial to us to, I guess, does it concern you? Does it concern you the uh, interest that they have, not just in issuing a digital currency, but in monitoring widespread patterns? Is there anything that uh, you think that's natural and um, going to be inevitable? Or do you think that there are aspects of that that we should be pushing against? I think we should absolutely be pushing against passive surveillance. I have a big issue with passive surveillance and big data analysis. I think the idea that organizations gather just momentous amounts of data on us and then look for patterns and uh, we're somehow not going to be caught up in false positives and in like a dragnet that's supposed to figure out this type of person and that type of person is just ludicrous. And I, I think if you look at, at things like um, the TSA and their random checks, you know, there's a classic example of a bunch of data that gets plugged into a system and that system is then supposed to say, oh, this person might be possibly doing something because of the way they walked or the way they looked at a camera or the sideways glance they gave someone. Yeah. And, and it's just crazy because these systems are built on all sorts of unproven hypotheses and, and assumptions. And so that's how it's going to go with a lot of this, like, you know, let's have a dragnet over financial data. We already have this problem with Facebook. Facebook is able, they've just got this plethora of data and they're able to go like, oh, well, we can determine based on a handful of photos, this person's sexual orientation. We can determine the way this person's gonna vote. They can determine all sorts of things with a fair degree of accuracy. And that's frightening, but it's because they are the holder and purveyor of that data. 
Now, what happens when they lose control of the data as they've already done in the past? And that's, that's really the, the, one of the key issues as well, is that you can't trust an organization or a government to hold that amount of data. Follow the treasure to pirate.black because financial privacy today is freedom tomorrow. Ah.